guys and welcome back to another tutorial for the variable list and m crater so today what we're going to be looking at is how to check for the code it's really simple stuff uh, we've already have the script that we covered last um, last part so there is pretty much the exact same thing that we did for the first top section with the repeaters and all we're doing is we're basically outputting a value to the um, what we need to basically confirm that it's being used for. Now this can basically be used for multiple things. It can be used for va validating that there is something there. It could be used for basically something that we're doing right now. We could be validating that there is a uh, item in the list and then print it out on the screen. For the player so it's really uh, limitless to what you can actually do with basically checking uh, the only difference is we're not doing any particular major thing to the actual list itself so when we actually check for it it's just printing it's basically validating that it's there and it's not going to do anything so I have uh, I've adjusted the right click a little bit as well so there is a little bit uh, different so now there needs to be an item only in the right hand of the particular player and right clicking on any block while not sneaking will basically add it if you uh, sneak and then right click it will remove it and if you switch the item by pressing F to the other hand and then right click while not sneaking then it will basically check so let's quickly do that. I'm gonna set the time quickly today. Just give me a second. All right, so if we right click on the block for the gra or the leaves right here, it will just print out yellow text saying that there is the items in that list. So we have a bone, diamond, and golden ignit. Uh, now if we were to clear that using F3, F, whoop, wrong one, uh, F3, I think it's S, D, D, that's the one, okay. All right, F3, D, that will clear our chat box area. So let's go and switch that to our main hand. We'll add the item. So now it says honeycomb at the end of that list. And then we'll have F, uh, F3, D again to clear the screen, just to confirm uh, nothing in our chat box. So let's switch it back over to the other hand and then what we're going to do is we're just going to right click the block again and as you can see there is the test that is in white and that's basically validating that we have a honeycomb in that particular list so this is our basically our check where it's basically checking and then printing out to the screen this is basically just to confirm ourself that we can see the honeycomb in that list so that's basically how the validating works now you can configure it however you want uh, it's really customizable that way but uh, the same thing basically goes for um, any procedure you can basically check confirm that it's in that list and then you could basically do some sort of procedure to uh, carry on with additional script in your code or something like that for example you could basically test if honeycombs were in that particular list and then you could I don't know kill all pigs in the in the radius of the player that would be possible if that's the case but um, of course you're gonna need a trigger to do that all right so let's hop into M Creator and I'll just break down everything, all the changes that I basically did. Uh, it's not too much. All right, so there are a couple changes that I've made to the procedures. Now the part that we're testing when we right click on a block, this is basically the trigger that I'm using to run the script from. Uh, you can basically use any trigger as long as it supports the text field and stuff like that that you use for your condition. Now a lot of these uh, procedures actually require an entity. So I've said like for using the right hand of the provided entity. So a lot of these will actually require entities if you use the right hand. But uh, it should be possible. Let me just double check some of the script. 
and I think it only okay so this uses entity as well I believe that's for regarding let's see here what is it regarding it's probably regarding the GUI maybe no nope, not the GUI it's something else in here okay it's the send message so you should be able to use if you were to remove these parts here it should only need to be run on the world side so it's pretty dynamic script when it actually comes down to it uh, of course you can use pretty much any trigger as long as it has the world uh, dependency so uh, most of them actually do have the world dependency so it's pretty dynamic that way uh, the only thing that i've basically changed here is i've created a condition where it's testing for the main hand to be not error and the offhand to be error if that's true then I'm basically running the script for the main hand items which is basically if the player is uh, not sneaking then it will add an item if the player is sneaking and it's in the main hand of the provided entity then I've basically set it up so it basically removes the item now the other thing that we're basically be covering today is the uh, example check script so or the check script which basically is the polar opposite of what we're doing with that so we're testing if our offhand item is air or not air and then what we're going to do is also test if our main hand item is air and if the player is not sneaking then what we're going to do is we're going to check for the uh, particular script that the item if the variable has the same item in the main the offhand so that's basically what we're doing here another thing that I've changed is I've just basically outputted the variable every time that there is a right click to basically output the um, global variable so we can basically see if it's actually in that list and that's what you saw on the video with the yellow text there All right, so that's covered. Now let's go into the check script itself. It's the first one right here. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it requires pretty much the exact same thing as the remove script that we covered last in the last part. If you haven't watched that, I did break down all of the parts for the remove script and pretty much up to this point right here. Uh, is all the same in that particular tutorial so definitely go watch that if you want to know how all this works I will however break down exactly what sections do what and the first section right here basically tests for the commas this section right here basically gets the position between two commas and if it can't find it in that the text from our test in that particular section then it will shift over if it can to a next section between two other commas so if there's three commas that makes two spots that it can basically test it will test for the first uh, section of the between the first two commas comma one and comma uh, two and if it can't basically find that particular value then it'll go from comma two to comma three and check for the contents between between that one so after which uh, we're basically just running a, a simple test to basically output the message to the player with the same value of the um, same value of the actual uh, item if it's in that particular list so for example uh, we're getting it from the GY in this particular one so we're getting it from the list text box text field and if it's the same in the GUI, if it finds something, then what it's going to do is it's going to use the substring text and print out the section from that particular comma between the commas and print it out for the entity to see. So that's basically what's going on here. This is the only difference in the script between the remove script and this check script. So you can basically put anything in this part right here to basically uh, test for 
alternate things. So if you wanted to, say, test if there's pigs within or if the player is holding a certain item and it's the same item as a particular list, then you can basically go, okay, and run this script. And then you can go, okay, that's great. Uh, kill all pigs in the radius of the player. And that would basically work. So that's basically the gist of the procedure. Uh, again, it's just testing for the list item to confirm that it's the same thing as this part right here. And then it's basically just printing out the message to the player as a easy way to display that it's checking. So if we go into our examples, I'll show you quickly how you could basically edit it in a way. Uh, there's obviously a lot more ways you can basically use this particular script, but as long as it supports a string variable such as a item display name like this one right here, uh, you can basically set it up so you can test for the item in say the main hand of the player or anything like that. The only thing is it needs to be another string to basically test if the value is true. So I will probably come out with a fifth part um, just after I basically make the procedures and stuff public, but I'll cover how you can basically convert most things like numbers, um, things like different variables and stuff like that from a actual value, so logic and numbers into a text form. So you can basically test for test for things like that. Uh, now, obviously this is really handy for items, but uh, with my mod um, CCT, not, yeah, CCTV craft, it will be also really useful for um, keeping track of permissions as well, because we can actually test for permissions within a certain string rather than have to go and test for a whole bunch of player UUIDs. I can test for the names of the players instead, which will make things a lot more easier when it comes down to permissions. So yeah, that's it's basically a nice little handy script that will test for the item. Now again, same thing as the other procedure, it's just basically printing out the text for the item. The only difference is these two blocks right here, and we're just getting the display name of the item in the offhand, and then we're basically going to print it out to the player. So hopefully you guys found today's video useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.